Hello everyone. I just want to give a quick little preface for this podcast episode. Um, I tried to post this a bunch of different times. This is recorded a while ago, over a month ago, before the name change, before all the things. But I think this is a timely word for right now. And I believe that the Lord is releasing me to release this word. God is so good. But I just want to like give you an update because you're probably like, everything is different. She's talking about, what is she talking about? old podcast name we don't know different hair everything but i pray that you're blessed also i got really excited and i did not pray so let's just pray really quickly thank you lord jesus for this day thank you for the other listener who's across the other side of the screen i ask that you just bless them open our ears and open our hearts to receive a revelation from your word this day holy spirit you're welcome here come and dwell with us as we read your word and dive into the scriptures oh lord jesus as a vessel lord god i ask that you would just continue to allow me to execute the word sharply and let it be blessed oh lord god let it fall on good ground and let us continue to advance your kingdom in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen hey welcome back to another episode of the pod formerly called a continuous stream of my consciousness as of right now as of recording this i am in the middle of a fast in order to determine what the lord is saying for the name of this podcast by the end of the week i'm believing that he will give me confirmation on some things because he's been a speaking and i've been a listening so i just want to make sure that i am in right standing with him in all things you already know this the cry of my heart is just not to hop on this podcast and just blabber which i think is what a continuous room in my consciousness the previous name sort of embodied but i do want to be a blessing to others and more specifically spread the word of the lord and hopefully touch souls and touch people who may not even know god but like click on a youtube video and they're like what's this girl talking about and they're like hold up jesus sound kind of cool i'm like he is cool girl come on that's like really the goal here um but i just want to say hey and i want to say thank you all for the support that you are showing and thank you for the well wishes and the comments um coming back from my hiatus um it has been such a blessing and the lord has been teaching me consistency is so important and being practical in my goals and what he is calling me to do i think sometimes we set goals um and we just set goals to set goals and sometimes we make plans to make plans but we don't see how that fits into my life and i guess for me in this podcast i was very like we're gonna record we're gonna record a separate stream for audio then we're gonna render the audio we're gonna like we're gonna mix the audio in logic we're gonna make it sound good then we're gonna upload it then we're gonna do blah, 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 blah. and the lord was like can we just start by getting a consistent word and he showed me and i'm like okay god if i'm doing this and i need to get like an adapter for my camera and i need to get this and, I, and he showed me that everything that i needed to make this podcast successful and a podcast that i'm happy to share and like talk about with others it doesn't even look like janky or nothing doesn't sound bad was all in my house it was all given to me unto the lord and sometimes i think we're so busy just trying to be like okay uh, what do i need to do lord like the lord oftentimes just meets us where we're at and where we see our current situations as inadequate the lord sees our current situations as the perfect starting point for the rest of our lives and to catapult us into our purpose so i just want to encourage you if the lord has given you something if he's given you a dream a vision um a task a calling that he wants you to do don't think about what you don't have but think about the tools that he's already given you and instilled in you uh, to start executing that goal and i think like that is so important and that is what the lord has really just been like humming and speaking to me like daughter you have all that you need to carry out the mission that i've asked you to in this season right now um and here i am talking to you and i didn't press record on my thingy bobber so yeah that has definitely been the cry of my heart and as someone who really is a perfectionist in some ways um and not a perfectionist in others i can definitely find myself struggling to start something if i feel like i don't have everything like if i feel like i don't have you know all of the equipment that i need or if i don't have the camera or the mic or the setup or the aesthetic then i sometimes will stop myself from starting um but yeah the lord has been blessing me to accept and be appreciative and content in the now but not content to lead to complacency where you never want to change but content enough to say i see where i am i see what you've given me i see the seed and the gift that you've placed in my hand and all you're asking me to do is walk it out 
so yeah that was like a little mini word in the word oh my goodness like the lord has really been like blessing me y'all and i just want to like propagate that and spread that on this podcast and just say like if you're open to listening to the lord he will be with you if you're open to just walking with the lord and holding your integrity and trying to consecrate yourself he will meet you in your faithfulness to him um it is so encouraging but hi welcome to the podcast if you're new my name is ali renee i am 23 years old and honestly this podcast um name to be decided name to be fasted and prayed about is really just about vulnerability and progression and just like consecration i want this to be a place where we can come and commune with the lord and read his word and find a safe space in just sharing with your sister as i share with you feel free to share with me it is such a blessing to just come and sit and be vulnerable at the feet of jesus and that is what we're talking about today because i want one of the big postulates of this podcast and of this space to be about vulnerability i want to share um why vulnerability is important and why that is important in our faith walk and why Jesus rewards vulnerability and sees us in the places where vulnerability is sometimes going to be hard to share because we're just not used to sharing or we might have pride or we don't want to get into it. But the best place to open up with is to your Abba, to your Father, to God, to Jesus who understands everything and already knows what you're battling and fighting with. But just having the vulnerability to share with him it isn't for him to say, oh, look, like I got this person to open up, but it's more so for you to have a place to release and then also to be poured into. So yeah, like I had mentioned before, I want to bring to you the victory that comes from our vulnerability and why vulnerability is so important when we interact with Jesus. I'm going to present to you one, two, two stories. I'm going to present to you two stories coming from the book of Luke. So we're going to be talking about Jesus and Jesus does an amazing job at explaining us to explaining to us the posture that we should have as followers of Jesus as Christians. Um, I'm going to open up with a story and I am going to use my personal story before we go into the Bible stories. So today um, I woke up, today's Sunday, and I went to church today. I usually get up around like five to leave the house for six to get to church for like 6.30 to seven, depending on the commute. Um, and it's cold. It's freezing in the Midwest. I think overnight it was like 15 degrees, minus 15 degrees Celsius here. And I started up my car and it was like six o'clock in the morning. It was really, really cold. I got in my car and I said my prayer and then I let my car warm up. And then as soon as I pulled my car out, I was like, oh my gosh why is there a signal coming on that every single one of my tire pressures is low mind you i'm a new car owner i've had my car for a year i got i had my license for like not even two years so i'm a good driver though don't try me i'm a good driver so um i i called my dad immediately and i was asking him what was going on at six o'clock in the morning and i could tell he had just woken up so i'm thankful that he picked up and i pulled into a gas station and we were talking he's like okay so this is usually what happens when you are like in colder weather the pressure of the tires goes down and your sensor is gonna be off a little bit um but just get out and check your tires so i checked my tires and everything was fine i was like okay okay so i talked to my dad and he was like okay drive to church and then when you get ho- get out of the car from church, see how your tires look. Because if you have a leak, by the time you get there, you'll be able to tell. Like the tires have gone down, the pressure will go down. And I realized when I was driving, I like spoke to my dad, thank God. And then I drove and I was being very cautious in the snow. And um, I realized that the sensor was going up as I was driving. So it seemed to be like what he had said about like... Um, the fact that the pressure was low because of the cold weather but as friction happens your wheels are turning things heat up the pressure comes back that's what happened but the sensor was still there when i was driving like and i was five minutes away from church and i was sitting there i'm like oh my gosh i'm here in this state in this country all alone my parents are there they're back in canada and my dad is three to four hours away my mom is three to four hours away and i didn't want to stress my mom out about it didn't want to stress my dad out about it and i was on my way to church and i'm like oh my gosh i literally have no one like i'm here by myself and i truly felt like i was by myself not even thinking about the fact that i was going to church with people who care about me and love me but in my head i'm like i'm not gonna tell them because these people have their lives these people have stuff going on and i just don't want to like share this part of my life with them so if i get there and everything's fine then i'm just gonna go home and like try to fill the air in my tire myself i'll figure it out 
and then I get to church and we're like setting up in the first two hours before service starts at nine and um I talked to one of the ladies at my church I don't know she's like a spiritual mother to me at this point and she was like what's going on because she be she could tell she can really tell and I was talking to her and I told her what happened with my tires and she's like were you just not gonna tell anyone I was like yeah I wasn't because it's like not that big of a deal and I just didn't want to bother anyone and she was like you do know you're not alone and that was like the direct answer for me sitting in my car feeling like I was alone but what it took for me to get to the point of her saying you're not alone and then me talking to some of my spiritual dads and them checking out the car and them being like no you're fine and helping me out and fixing it and being like maybe don't fill air in your tires just in case that pressure goes back up and they were they were just helping me out a lot in order for me to get to that point of help i had to recognize that i was in a point of need and then after that i couldn't stay there but i had to be vulnerable i had to talk to the spiritual mother that was at my church and be like hey girly i'm going through it and she was like asking me and she challenged me she's like why is it so hard for you to open up I'm like I genuinely am like not the best at being vulnerable like I never want to be a burden to anyone and she's like you have to understand like you're in a place where you're not a burden but people are in in your life to bless you but if you're not willing to be vulnerable and open to them how then can they help you and bless you if you won't let go of your burdens how then will you you're you're holding on to a burden and looking around saying what can i do i'm so alone but if only you knew all you had to do was release the burden to jesus release the burden to those around you to then pick up a blessing in it's in that burden's place that was in your hands and that sort of echoed for me because what i'd been dealing with in my prayer time with the lord was this challenge of vulnerability being vulnerable to the lord and you might be asking yourself like what do you mean being vulnerable like god knows everything like when you pray you're probably just like chatting with god and you're telling him all of your problems and your concerns but it's interesting because my patterns of not wanting to be a problem or a burden to people like in the real world almost translated to my prayer life where i would worship the lord i would thank the lord i would praise the lord but i never wanted to like talk to him about the deepest darkest feelings in my heart even though i knew jesus knows this he knows every deep dark corner of your heart you could make your bed in hell and he would still find you and know you and i knew that but i didn't want to say it out my mouth Because then those things would be real. That would call me to be vulnerable about how I was feeling. And I just didn't want to do it. So I played this game of praising and worshiping, even in my quiet times, communal times. But I was like, I'm good, Lord. Like, I'm good. It's like when you ask your friend how they're doing, you're like, oh, I'm good, girl. And they're like, are you sure you're good? You're like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. But I was doing that to Jesus, who already knew my problems. And... I found freedom in this passage in Luke that I want to share with you. And it's in Luke chapter 7. And we're going to start at verse 36. And it's talking about this woman who was a sinner. And the whole town knew she was a sinner. So her vulnerability was... Everything was already out there. But she chose to be vulnerable and pour everything she had at the feet of Jesus despite scrutiny and despite what others may have thought of her and because of this she found freedom in jesus and this is one of these extreme examples where this woman was literally known for her deviance and for how her sins but she was still willing to be humble and vulnerable at the feet of jesus and because of that she felt freedom and deliverance so let's go to luke chapter 7 we're going to start at verse 36 It says, one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at a table, speaking of Jesus. And behold, a woman of a city who was a sinner, when she learned that Jesus was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment, so a really nice um, container of oil. And standing behind him at his feet, she wept, and she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with her the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with oil going into a posture of full surrender and vulnerability now when the pharisees who had invited him saw this he said to himself if this man were a prophet he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him for she is a sinner and jesus answered saying to him simon i have something to say to you and he answered say it teacher 
And then he gives a parable and he says, a certain money lender had two debtors, one who owned 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one, I suppose, from whom he canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, you have judged rightly. Then turning to the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house and you gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she had not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. And he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And some things that I want you to take away from this is this first part where we see that this woman hears of Jesus. She hears that she's that Jesus is in a Pharisee's house, which almost to her is like this big old fortress where it's like, if I go in there, the Pharisees are like these super religious people. And she was known for being like a sinner in the town. So she knew where she was stepping into was a place full of condemnation. But through the condemnation, through what other people may have thought of her, she realized that if she could just get to the feet of Jesus, she would be set free and she would be delivered. And that is like the first step of vulnerability. Sometimes we understand that we have problems or situations that we want to hypothetically give to the Lord, but there are things blocking us. For her, the blockage could have been the Pharisee. The blockage could have been, I'm not going to the Pharisee's house. He's, they're judgmental. They're holier than thou. They'd be talking about me in this town. So you're telling me I have to go into this house where people was talking about me and then push through and be like, excuse me, I got to get to Jesus and then get to Jesus first and foremost. Sometimes that's hard for us to do. And it's funny because we sometimes can be our own Pharisees to ourselves. When we know that we're sinning, we're falling down bad paths. We can recognize that we are sinning, but we can also stop ourselves from confessing it because we're like, oh girl, you're too far gone. You've already done too much. If you share this, if you confess this to Jesus, then it becomes real to you. Then you have to claim the sins that you've been doing. If you go to the feet of Jesus and say, this is what I've been going through. These are the thought process I've been having. These are the sins that I struggle with. Lord, please help me. Being vulnerable almost means that you have to take accountability and ownership for the things that you're struggling with. Just like when I was driving to church and I was like, girl, I'm not going to tell nobody. Nobody needs to know about my tires. I'm blessed. I don't want them to think I got a cheap car. I don't, I don't take care of my car. But in order for me to have sound mind and peace leaving church and knowing that my tires would be fine, knowing that my car would be fine, I had to be vulnerable and say, despite what I think other people's would think, I have to be honest. I have to be vulnerable and enter in and be like, Hey guys, listen, I'm scared my car is not working because it says something's wrong with my tires. I don't care how you feel in the sense of, oh, did this girl feel not fill up her thing and this, 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 and that, 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 and that. And you know what the thing is? When I said it to them, they didn't even second guess it. They're like, oh yeah, that's normal. I was thinking I was going to get made fun of and they were going to be like, oh, have you not put, when's the last time you put air in your tire and do you even know how to do this? Da, 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 da. But their initial reaction was like, oh yeah, that's normal. That's fine. Mine came on this morning. You know what I mean? And I think for this woman, she didn't even have that safe space where sometimes we go in our prayer closet and our biggest enemy are ourselves. She was surrounded by people who knew her sin and were scrutinizing her actively, but she pushed by that. So if she has the courage, this meek and lowly woman from the city has the courage and the bravery to be vulnerable in a space surrounded by people who were her enemies in front of Jesus, what more can we do to shut off our own voices or our own thoughts or our own self-judgments in our prayer time so that we can push forward past those thoughts and to the feet of Jesus so we can find true freedom? And that's the first thing that really stood out to me. And then the second thing that stood out to me was when the Pharisee recognized that the girl was there and she was wiping his feet um, with her hair and wetting his feet with her with the oil and her tears, the Pharisee says, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is touching him for she is a sinner. Now the Pharisee was like, Jesus must not know who this girl is touching. You, do you know what she'd be doing on Saturday night? Do you know the thoughts that she has? Do you know the doubts that she has already about you, Jesus? If you knew 
who she was, if you knew who this person was when she prays to you and she's vulnerable to you, you wouldn't even want to hear it. But the amazing thing about our Savior is that he's nothing like us. He's nothing like man who even in times where I've had doubt of Jesus and I've been scared to confess my doubt to Jesus, Jesus already knows about a place of doubt or a place of unbelief. And all he does is says, okay, I I see you. I don't judge you in that place, but I say, just come to me and let me show you who I am to remove that doubt and replace it with belief in me. Jesus isn't afraid of your issues. He already knows your issues. He already knows what you're battling with and struggling with. All he asks us to do is to push past those thoughts and then to come confess those things to him and he'll protect you. We see that Jesus even though the woman was a sinner, when the when she expressed vulnerability to Jesus, he protected her. He defended her in front of the Pharisees saying, do you see this woman? I have entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped it with her. She, he went off on the Pharisees. He said, therefore, I tell you her sins, which are many are forgiven for she loved much, but he who forgives little loves little. So when she was vulnerable with Jesus. When we're vulnerable with Jesus in our quiet times, he doesn't come in a place of condemnation and saying, I told you so, but he comes and saying, thank you, my daughter, I've been waiting. Thank you, my son, I've been waiting for you to come to me. Now, let me show you how I protect you and wrap you wrap you in your arms in this process where I know you're trying your best. Thank you for being vulnerable about those things and those patterns that you keep going back to. Now, let me show you how to break those patterns and protect you and put a shield around you so that there's no more condemnation now because you've confessed it to me. When things are stuck in your head, when you don't let things out, when you're not vulnerable, it's only just you and the devil and your thoughts now and your flesh being like, okay, how am I supposed to deal with this? And how am I supposed to get this air in my tire? And how am I supposed to stop this sin? And how am I supposed to do this? Like a lot of the times we're trying to fix things before we get to Jesus when Jesus is the fixer. It's like if I'm trying to figure everything out before I get to my mechanic appointment, if I'm like, let me try it, let me, let me try to fix it myself and let me try to put air in the tire and patch this hole and do this and reprogram this about my car when I'm on my way to the mechanic in 20 minutes. And that's the thing, like we sometimes do worse by it because we're inexperienced. I don't know how to heal hearts. I don't know how to save souls. I don't know how to transform people's minds and I don't know how to set people free from bondage and curses. So who am I to try to do that to myself? Who am I to try to fix myself before coming to Jesus when Jesus is the fixer? He's the reason why our souls are saved. He's the reason why we can be renewed. So why not go to him in those times? But again, it takes vulnerabilities. It takes vulnerabilities. And another thing is that I wrote down here in terms of Jesus's protection and onwards We see that the only expectation that Jesus had of this woman is her vulnerability. She came to him. She was vulnerable. She humbled herself and sat at his feet and just wept at Jesus and released everything to him. And all that Jesus required of her for her freedom, for her sins to be forgiven, for her to go in peace was that she was vulnerable in his presence. And this reminded me of another story in Luke. This is just a couple chapters over where Jesus, again, requires vulnerability in Luke 10. We see this in this postulate of Mary Mary versus Martha. And let's go to Luke 10. Let's go to Luke 10. We're going to see basically two ways that we can act or behave in Jesus's presence. And you choose which one is more fruitful. You choose the the Mary, which M sister do you want to be? Do you want to be Mary in the presence of Jesus or do you want to be Martha in the presence of Jesus? So here we are at Luke 10. We're going to go to verse 38. It says, Now as they went on their way, now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. She went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. So we see here that Martha is in this bondage of trying to look busy and trying to get things done for Jesus. Like I said, sometimes we're always trying to do all this stuff for Jesus. Lord, let me worship you. Lord, let me praise you. Lord, let me da 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 da. 
when the most fulfilling thing that we can do for Jesus is just to be vulnerable and sit at his feet and say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Mara was, Martha was in bondage to looking busy, looking changed, looking transformed. Yet the transformation comes from actually admitting your shortcomings in times of struggle with Jesus. Where Martha was like, oh, I, I don't really need to sit at the feet of Jesus and, and be transformed and be honest and be vulnerable and, and really humble myself because I'm good. I don't need his teachings. I don't need his transformation. I don't need his healing. Even though I'm dealing with all these anxieties and worries or trying to get stuff done, I'm gonna do other stuff and I'm busy. I go to church and I serve and I worship and I praise, but my heart posture is worried and anxious. Jesus sees the worried and anxious in verse 41 says, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. So he sees the anxiety. He sees the troubles that are in her heart. And if only she would have just slowed down to sit at the feet of Jesus, be vulnerable and admit it's more important for me to be with Jesus than to distract myself with things so that I don't have to listen to Jesus. And I think for me, at least I would distract myself from coming to the feet of Jesus and being in his presence because I just didn't want like the truth because you know sometimes when we sit at the feet of Jesus and we're vulnerable he's going to be like okay just like with the other woman he sees her he protects her but at the same time where we see Jesus encounter other women for example the woman who's going to be stoned because of the sin of, of adultery she runs to Jesus Jesus defends her in front of the pharisees but jesus will hold us accountable he'll say okay i see what you're doing now go and sin no more so he holds us accountable and sometimes in vulnerability it's and an, you know me i'm not always i'm not going to sugarcoat everything in vulnerability yes it's amazing that we can come to jesus and be protected but jesus will also demand of us to then move out of this place that we're in and move forward and walk forward in him whether that mean hey you have these patterns of sin Thank you for being vulnerable and telling me, but here are some practical steps that you need to act out to go and sin no more. And that is another thing that would stop me from talking to Jesus because I'm like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to change. So I can't go sit and be vulnerable with Jesus because in my heart, I know that I'm not ready. But even in the not readiness, I think we need to push past that because I don't think anyone is ever really ready to kill their flesh because you live in a fleshly body. So you're always going to be like, nah, you know what? I don't want to do it. Maybe another time, maybe another day. We're never going to be ready to fully kill our flesh. So even in the not readiness, we must be vulnerable. We must sit at the feet of Jesus in those prayer closets and just fight and persevere. Another thing is, we have to have this posture of sitting at the feet of Jesus and humbling ourselves. It is in the crying. It is in the weeping. It is in the searching of your heart, in your quiet times, in your prayer closets, where it's like, I don't even want to say this out my mouth, Lord, because it is like the things that I do, I don't even want to say out my mouth because then I have to admit it. These are ugly parts of me. You have to give it to him. And I didn't realize when people would say like, you have to like be there and give him your ugliest parts. I wouldn't do it. So I didn't get how hard it was. But when you're there and you're in the presence of the Lord and then you have to like confess your deepest, darkest things, like you're like, no, I don't want to do that. I'd rather just pray and then like read my Bible real quick. And like I prayed and read my Bible for the day. But you don't see growth because there's no vulnerability. You don't see the conquering and victory and the things that you struggle with because you don't confess it to the Lord in the first place. So he can't help you. It goes back to that analogy. You're hurt, you're holding this sin. You're holding this burden. You're like Martha in the kitchen trying to prepare you have all these things in your hands you're talking you're moving you're walking but you're not listening and it is only when you drop those things that are occupying you those anxieties and worries those i'm trying to figure out myself it's only when you drop those burdens that you're able to pick up the blessing of victory over those things you're struggling with but that all starts with vulnerability to the lord so I'm going to reiterate this last point. We must have a posture of sitting at Jesus' feet, humbling ourselves in the crying, in the listening, and in the openness to receive, like Mary did. Because Mary recognized she was inadequate. She didn't know everything, so she went and she sat at the feet of Jesus. And so did the woman with the oil and the weeping. We have to, again, sit and recognize our sin and confess it and sit at the feet of Jesus and be vulnerable in that way in our inadequacy, like Mary did, in our lack of wisdom, as well as in our sin, in our transgressions, in our wanting to change, like the woman with the oil. 
And then I have one more scripture that I want to share with you that sort of just talks about why we should celebrate this idea of being weak. Because now I think you're probably like, girl, like, I got to be vulnerable and weak. Like, why would I want to do that? Like, I recognize that this is something that I have to do, but it's hard for me to accept that I have to say that I'm weak. And for some of us who do everything on our own, like I was an only child. I still am an only child. I live by myself. I'm very independent. So it's like, I'm not going to call my mom or my dad. I'm going to try to figure it out. Until it gets to the point where I'm like, oh, heck no, I cannot figure this out at all. I will not pick up the phone and call. I will do everything I can to solve these problems in myself. I do not want to come off as weak, but sometimes we have to accept our weakness. And we see this in 2 Corinthians verse 12, where Paul is speaking and he's rejoicing in his weakness, which is kind of crazy. It says here, we're going to start at verse 7, so we're going a little bit above where I want us to focus in on. So Paul says, So keep me from being conceited, from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations. A thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being conceited. So we see that Paul is writing all these letters to these churches and telling them how to live right. And because of this, it could probably build some some you know some pride in him you know what i'm saying it could like sometimes for me at least when i was progressing especially in the latter half of 2023 into 2024 i was like dang i'm doing right i'm reading my bible i got the holy spirit i got a new tongue i've got this revelation and i'm serving and sometimes we build this conceit for ourselves but paul says that we have this thorn this humbling thorn which is our flesh which is the fact that we still sin we still have things that we go through which opens up this weakness which then opens up a path to vulnerability to the lord to be healed and then to progress it says three times i pleaded with the lord about this that it should leave me that this thorn in my side that this fleshly you know these shortcomings these weaknesses should leave me So hear what the Lord says to Paul when Paul says, Lord, I don't want to be weak anymore. Take my weakness. Take my need to be vulnerable. The Lord says to him, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in the weakness. Therefore, then Paul says, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For, for the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardship, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So we see here in verse 9, Jesus responds to Paul's response of being like, I don't want to be vulnerable. Please take this weakness for him. Jesus says you should rejoice in that weakness because what does he say? My grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. And we saw how Jesus' grace was sufficient in weakness. When Mary was on her knees learning from Jesus, his power was he, he was made powerful in her weakness. When that woman who was a sinner came and sat down and wept, showing her most vulnerable and weak state, Jesus' saving power of salvation gave her peace and her sins were forgiven in her weakness. Without weakness and openness, there is no room for Jesus' power to be made perfect in you. So rejoice in the weakness that you have. Rejoice in the, the need for vulnerability because those should be, you should illuminate. Those should be like, those are opportunities for Jesus to do something in my life. Without moments of weakness, Jesus' power cannot be made strong in in you. And then it continues to say, Therefore, I will boast, Paul will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, of my vulnerability, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. We can see that there's a joy in vulnerability. There's a joy in having these shortcomings on our own. And then he says, For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weakness. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And we we probably heard this saying, like, let the weak say I am strong in Joel um, chapter 3, verse 10. Let the weak say I am strong. And sometimes we do that. That's a little delulu because it goes beyond just saying, oh, I'm strong, I'm strong, so I'm good. I'm going through this, but I'm going to say I'm strong. I'm going to keep it pushing. No, there needs to be prayer. We can't just be declaring these things without taking it to the Lord. Because I would do that too. I'd be like, oh, no, we good. Like, I'm not going to complain about it. God isn't asking you to complain. He's just asking you to acknowledge what's going on. So we're not just like drowning and we're like, no, I'm totally and water's filling your nose. and you're, I'm literally fine. In order for us to be safe from drowning, we have to acknowledge that we're drowning. So let's not use that scripture. Let the weak say I'm strong from Joel 3 verse 10 out of context. Okay, so we see here that it's beyond when Paul says, for when I am weak, then I am strong. This is beyond just a superficial saying that we say sometimes. But 
strong we need to ask ourselves what did what did he mean by strong when we see joel 3 verse 10 who were they strong in was it just oh i'm strong in myself so i'll figure it out no because in joel 3 verse 16 just a couple of verses after they say let the weak say i am strong it goes to say the lord is a refuge to his people and a stronghold to the people of israel so their strength wasn't in themselves when we say let the weak say i am strong it is not because i'm strong within myself it's because i'm able to surrender those things to the lord and he becomes my refuge he becomes my stronghold and he becomes the reason why i'm able to be set free and say that I am strong but it starts with the vulnerability in us to be humble enough to say I can't do it by myself Lord be a stronghold to me that army was not a strong army because they were strong that army was a strong army because they believed in the Lord and they put the Lord first and they were able to admit like hey listen y'all ours aren't looking good so Lord can you be my refuge can you be my stronghold can you fight on my behalf and when the Lord says yeah I got you thank you for being vulnerable with me so I can fight on your behalf now thank you for dropping your burden so you can pick up the blessing now we can walk in the Joel 310 province that says let the weak say I am strong because I've given it to the Lord and I think that's what we miss sometimes. The refuge, saying that the Lord is our refuge is implying that there is a reliance. There's a running to the Lord when we are at our weakest. And if anything this brings to you, it's this idea that when we are going through things, the first in the first instinct for a lot of humans is to look within ourselves. But I'm challenging you to take it to the Lord in prayer. Even in the ugliest things where you're like, oh, I don't even want to admit it. Like, oh, I'm going through this sin and I feel so icky and I be swearing and I can't stop drinking. But you have to give it to the Lord. You have to be vulnerable. You have to ask him for help because through vulnerability, you receive victory. Oh, I need to pray. Seal this time, O Lord Jesus, under the precious blood of the Lamb. Thank you for blessing me. I, I got a little bit of the zeal of the Lord, but I just want to cover this time still and say thank you so much for speaking through me. And I pray that whoever's on the other end of this is blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you so much for watching. Amen. Bye, guys. That was, that was cool.